My name is Jumbo Pixel. Welcome back to Humankind. These are top tips for advancing players. Let's begin. So if you find yourself, like me, with macro micropixel, starving and unable to really train any units or build any districts fast enough to give it food, there are a couple of other things you can do to generate food in a city that aren't quite as obvious. The first one is you want to make sure that you're managing your civics correctly. The most obvious way to manage them is to make sure that you're moving towards worldliness because that will give you plus 10% food on all cities. But of course there are other civics that can add food, like communal land for example, that gives plus 10 food per number of attached territories. However, it's not just through civics and technologies, you can also consider trade. Why? Well, because all cities from basically the beginning of the game uh, will have built this, the very first upgrade, the animal barns, that provide plus five food per horses, uh, in the same way that other upgrades provide the same for copper. So don't forget to have a look across empires to open up the trade everything treaty, if they'll accept it, and then you can trade uh, strategic resources and pick up a little bit of extra food, a little bit of extra industry, uh, whatever it may be that it's providing. Generally, it's either food or industry, but absolutely worth doing. But what if those little changes aren't enough? What if you just can't muster enough to lift your cities up? We're going to move in and take a look now at Luluban, and I'm going to discuss burning down cities and creating new ones. So Lulu here, missing a lot of infrastructure. It's industry is so poor as well that it's going to take a long time to build it. What I'm going to do instead is destroy the city and rebuild a new one in its place. All of these districts will stay put. So what do I need to do? I need to grab one of my units, click the ransack button on this unit. It'll take one turn to ransack my own city. Now, let's remind ourselves of its yields. Sub 100 food and industry and a lot of science with a lot of scientists. We're getting around 200 science. It's also connected to a few territories. Okay. Pillaging it, it's going to take one turn to destroy it. Okay. Now, one turn later, we've gained 107 gold from destroying our own city and we're going to claim territory probably just straight back where it was. Reclaim this territory. Rebuild the things that you need to rebuild. The harbors, of course, are fairly free. You will need, it's important to note, a little bit of influence or gold, if you're using gold, we'll talk about that later, to pull this off. So just bear that in mind, but it's worth it, trust me. So a few turns later, I have the influence required, noting you could also do this with gold if you have the civic enacted. Now, let's rebuild the city. Now you'll note that it has all of the necessary infrastructure in place. Take a look. Now on my infrastructures tab, there's almost nothing to build. Why? Because, as a reminder, technologies like Three Mastered Ship that provide colony plans, city plans, blueprints, these make it so that new cities start with all infrastructures from the previous era. Since I've unlocked colony plan, all of those city infrastructures from area one through three have now been automatically built in my new city. Now, we've lost a lot of population in the process, so you'll note that my yields are totally different. However, we will be able to hopefully quickly grow back up. You'll see my districts have now been revitalized now that they're part of a city. And because I have all of the infrastructure in place, crucially, I can build things much, much faster. It's only going to take me around three turns to build my Sewan here in my new city. Watch what happens also if I attach up the territories that used to be attached to it. One of them is fairly cheap. I'm going to have to save up for an extra turn to get the second one. But you can see already now with some extra space, more population, more growth. Hopefully we're going to start to snowball with even just four people in the city. Its yields are better than what it was before. The power of not only building new cities, but potentially burning down and rebuilding your existing ones, if you have the influence or gold to do it, is absolutely worth doing. But your new flash cities won't stop your opponent's ideology from spreading their filthy civics if you have lower influence than them. Here's a top tip on how to deal with it. 
So if you're like me and you're in a situation where you don't have control of your civics, you just don't have quite control over your societal pressure and you're suffering from the civics osmosis events, what you can do is jump into your city, check your stability. What you'll note already here is that I have a minus 50 stability defiant status. Watch what happens as I do not want to claim this civic. I do not want my territories to be attaching with money because I have no money. So I'm going to refuse it, which provides minus 50 stability for 10 turns. Usually really tough. But if you have a little bit of bonus stability, you can tank it. So don't be afraid to refuse. Also though, and really the point of this top tip, if you've already refused, if you already have that minus 50 stability from defiant status that I have and had before, it doesn't stack. You don't receive another minus 50. The 10 turns that it stays does uh, refresh. So you're gonna be stuck with 10 more turns of minus 50, but it doesn't stack on top. So if you've refused one, you can refuse them all on your, on your, on your same city. Very powerful thing to bear in mind. I'd like now to draw your attention on settlers, taking us back to cities. Take a look at this. If you liked the city raising tip and wanted to really take it to the extreme, have a look at this unit, the settler. The settler can build an advanced colony and there are more advanced versions of the settlers as we move throughout. I'm gonna research steam engine that will provide me with a more advanced blueprint for more advanced infrastructures and now that i'm moving through into the next era i can even consider potentially a civil engineering play that will surge me through and mean that new cities have six pop but crucially also you can build them without influence these units the settlers the construction teams build cities as their function as their primary function now we've talked a lot about cities and that kind of thing I want to give you a really powerful tip that sort of relates to them, but really this is a tip about warfare, about how to do good war that benefits you. This tip is really designed to reduce the cost of war score. So at the moment I'm at war with the industrial British. Um, it's an ongoing war, it's been going for a while. Uh, war score is roughly similar, so it should keep going for a long time. One of the key ways to make sure that you pick up territories and don't even bother with negotiating for them afterwards is to pillage as you go. Here you can see I've got this army pillaging this administrative center. What I'll do, here's an example of somewhere where it's already finished, is after I've pillaged it, place a territory of my own. Expansionists, of course, could use their ability to do this for free. I'm doing it forcibly by ransacking here and then placing a new outpost. It's a great way to hoover up these territories because you're not claiming them as part of the war. So you get to keep them within your empire forever really really valuable because it makes even small skirmishes where you're not trying to completely annihilate your opponent but maybe just conquer a territory win a couple of fights and then end the war even more valuable so i've just moved forward and pillaged this one but oh there are some cultures and civics that can buff your yields from pillaging as well so it can be super ridiculous for gold you can also get civics to buff your combat strength while you're pillaging plus five uh but here it is in a nutshell smash down the outpost claim territory of my own boom it's immediately built the district that we're here or was here in this case because it's just one is revitalized and of course because it's a new outpost i can improve it in ways that they were unable to like building a harbor here so i can easily jump across and take this island or perhaps shift clicking a whole load of forests where trees used to not exist saving the planet and also adding industry to all of these tiles making the city's yields uh, a lot better in the process I don't know, it's up to you, but either way, there it is in practice, do with it what you will. And I'd like to now move on to talking about cultural specificities, specifically looking at scientists. When you're playing a scientific culture, your collective mind's ability is everything. At the moment I'm earning 10,000 science, that's really good because I've played a lot of scientific cultures. Uh, if you hadn't at this point in the game, uh, on slow speed, so I'm about two thirds of the way through, you could easily be at only a couple of thousand. But watch, even for a game like this, Keaton Keane, this city, I hit collective mines. It converts all of my money uh, and industry earned into science. Zero industry and zero money, so do watch your coffers, but huge boost to science. Look at that, an extra 4,000 from just one city that only has one other place attached to it. I could zoom my way over to 
Alaskan Asia. You can see Industry Central next door is already doing this for us. Alaskan Asia might want to jump in on board as well, smashing in some more science. Damask here too. It's got huge industry, really benefits. As you can see, I've smashed a few cities on. One, two, three. Shall we do the fourth city? How good? Just for good measure. Boom. Fourth city, and we've over doubled our science. This is incredibly powerful at every stage in the game to surge you up to get to key technologies for key unlocks like patronage, or of course, to unlock these crucial scientific stars. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting me. I really do appreciate it, all of it. Thank you so much. Go out there and kick butt. I'll see you next time.